All right, boys, welcome back to JJDL week five versus CJ, who you can check out in the top right hand corner. And if you missed last week's match, we ended up winning. And we're now two and two on the road to six and two and to potentially winning this season. Unfortunately, Obo and my schedules did not line up this week, so I was not able to really test this team at all. And I'm not extremely confident in most of the sets, but there's a couple of sets that I think do very, very well. But I'll talk about the matchup in just a second. Be sure to check out CJ and all of the other JJDO coaches down below. Let's get into the matchup. So it's tough to call this one a bad matchup, but it's not a good matchup. We have, we match up well outside of two Pokemon. But those two Pokemon might have the best matchup that I've ever seen those two Pokemon have ever. At least one of them has the best matchup I've ever seen that Pokemon have. And those two Pokemon are Iron Valiant and Latios, his top two threats. His team also includes Empoleon, Terra, Ogre, Pond, Normal. That's the grass one, so it can only Terra into the grass type. Talonflame, Donphan, Overquill, Meloetta, Dusknoir, and Electivire. And the Terra Pokemon are going to be that Ogre, Pond, like I said, and the Dusknoir. So... The two Pokemon that do well are Valiant and Latios. So I talked about this a little bit on stream. There's not really too much of a way to get super creative here against those two Pokemon. I'm facing Iron Valiant without a Poison type. I'm facing Latios without a Dark type or without a real Fairy type. So realistically, no matter what kind of team I build, those two Pokemon are always going to have a fantastic matchup. I have some Pokemon that can pretend to be answers. I have Raging Bolt that can Terra and potentially be an answer for one or the other, but not both at the same time. So it's it's a little tough, but outside of those two Pokemon, there aren't really any Pokemon that do super well on CJ's side. Overquill can be a little bit scary, but past that, like we have checks for Ogre Pond and Poleon, Donphan. We match up very well into the other Pokemon. It's just Empoleon, not Empoleon, Iron Valiant and Latios. We do not match up well into at all. As for the Pokemon that I think he's going to bring, I think obviously Valiant Latios come any variant of any build that you would ever bring into my team. It doesn't matter. They should always come. Latios specifically, I'm hyper focused on a spec set with flip turn, dual stabs, and surf. That set really just doesn't have any counterplay. My only somewhat defensive check is, like I said, Raging Bolt or the Iron Boulder. And they can flip turn on the Iron Boulder and do like 40 with no attack, which is crazy. But there's also some other good sets like Agility, Calm Mind, uh, Thunderbolt, and Dragon Pulse, I think was a set that I thought of that did really well into me. It's, it's tough. Like, he could bring a lot of different sets that they could all do very well. Luster Purge, in general, is very difficult for my team to deal with, and he can take advantage of that very well. And the only Pokemon I have faster to revenge him is going to be Iron Boulder. So... It's like, there's not really a good way around Latios, Latios, excuse me. In my opinion, this is the best Latios matchup I've ever seen. I have never seen such a good Latios matchup and I can hyper focus and I can make Raging Bolt the specific check to that obviously, but past that, there's literally not counterplay on my whole team. It's gonna be tough. And obviously Valiant, it does still good, but not as good as Latios in my opinion. We do have some counterplay. The Pokemon that it wants to one shot, it can't. So it needs to play for some chip. And with the rest of his team doing very poorly, it's going to be tough for him to get that chip on things like Iron Hands that it doesn't one shot. Or Saluna Blood Moon, and Raging Bolt. Like it's, it's very good if he can get the chip and the dual stabs do fantastic into me. And obviously, you know, Raging Bolt can also soft check it if we do decide to check the Latios, which we're going to. Uh, but it's it's tough because he wants to get everything chipped and it's hard to get everything chipped But Latios it doesn't matter like that thing just puts me in a blender past that It's tough to say what other four Pokemon he could bring and my opinion Overquill is the next best Pokemon spike stack into me is very good Especially when you have a spin blocker like Dusk Noir who I think will be his fourth Pokemon I think a split death or an AV Dusk Noir with some sort of a Terra type to resist Ursuluna Blood Moon actually does pretty well because he doesn't have great Ursuluna Blood Moon resists. He has good ways to offensively pressure it, but if Ursuluna Blood Moon gets into a position where it can offensively pressure something like Overquill that doesn't do a ton of damage, he doesn't really have great switch-ins. And I think Dusknoir is the best switch-in on his team. So I think that comes. Don't really think Ogre Pond regular comes because we have a Skarmory that checks it forever, but he could bring like a spike set if he doesn't want to be spikes on his Overquill. Very possible. Outside of that, I think those four are guaranteed. The last two slots are pretty up in the air. I think Talonflame could make an appearance. Donphan could make an appearance to be a spinner. Obviously, we have pretty good hazard stack on our team. So we might want to keep that away. So Donphan makes sense. The only Pokemon that I think doesn't make sense is Electivire. I think it doesn't really come into this matchup. We have Raging Paul, Iron Hands, Ursuluna, Blood Moon. Our top three Pokemon don't care about you. Rillaboom, Resist Electric. 
it's just it, it doesn't make a ton of sense the other nine pokemon do though like Melowana, also an av set could make sense for ursula and blood moon potentially so tough matchup <laughs> so how are we going to combat this good question <laughs> the first pokemon that we're going to bring is the pokemon that i think does the best in this matchup on our side of the field it's the only pokemon that i think does super well on our end and it's going to be raging bull we're going to be terra fairy and we're going to opt to be calm mind and we're going to be thunderclap thunderbolt and terra blast we don't really need dragon stab we could have been and i did debate on a more offensive set with something like specs because draco's very free into our opponent but i really like the terra fairy because it soft checks the iron valley and it soft checks the Latios so we can come in and it just with its insane bulk can revenge those Pokemon and obviously spam Terra Blast Fairy into those Pokemon, both of which being weak to Fairy. I think having a Fairy is very crucial in this matchup and it allows Latios to not spam Dracos. And obviously I'm not bringing Wigglytuff. So it feels like a Telegraph uh, Terra here. It feels like the most predictable Terra possible, but I also feel like it's a little bit necessary. Thunderclap gives us priority into something like the Valiant if we find out that maybe he's just simply four attacks. Thunderbolt for the Empoleon and then Terra Blast is pretty unresisted by everything else. We live two Valiant Booster Special Attack Moonblast once we are in our Terra form. We can live a plus two Spear Break from the Valiant after Rocks if he's a physical variant and then we went the rest into Special Attack Modest. This is going to be a soft win con but also a soft check to Latios and Valiant. This Pokemon is very crucial and wants to do a lot of things in this matchup. And one reason that I'm a little bit worried that I didn't get to test this team is because I think it's probably going to get overwhelmed to be completely honest with you. I think Raging Bolt is so crucial in so many different aspects of this game. I really am afraid that it's going to get overwhelmed and try to do too many things at once. And if that is what it is, then I guess I saw it coming and I should have brought a different set. But I do think that this Calm Mind has potential to win the game in the late game. Our next Pokemon is going to be Shoulder Day, the big carry of the season so far. We're going to be Assault Vest. It's a little bit weird and it still doesn't really check Latios as well as you'd want it to, but it's my only resemblance of a Latios check on the team. We're going to be Mighty Cleave, Zen Headbutt, Close Combat, and Mega Horn. We kind of need all four moves, so AV was pretty just set in stone in my opinion on this set. We, we could have been Booster Speed. But I like this set a little bit better to have any resemblance of a Latios check to try to switch in. Obviously, he can flip turn on us and surf on us for free. I'm trying my best, man. Mighty Cleaves Unresisted, Zen Headbutt to Oko the Valiant. Close Combat for the Empoleon and the Megahorn to try to Oko the Latios. It'll have to be after Rocks, though. We're an extremely fast and swift death variant of Iron Boulder. This lets us outspeed the Iron Valiant. We can live two Specs Latios Shadow Balls, and then we went the rest into Attack. This Pokemon is just here to try to pretend to be a Latios check to prevent maybe a Sword Power Sweep, if that is a set that he wants to go with. Ultimately, I did decide that was a little scary, like Agility Calm Mind Sword Power last move was very scary. So, I mean, this could potentially stop that. He could also just simply be Last Slot Surf. So, I don't know. There's not too much Latios counterplay I have. I think this is the best that I have. It can Revenge it at least if he's not dragon dance or agility with mega horns so i like it being the hard switch in i guess we do have to be careful of flip turns though our next pokemon skarmory skarmory is here for the ogre pond for the overquill it can also potentially check the valiant depending on what kind of set he ends up bringing or at least take a hit from that pokemon we're going to be rocky helmet this is to help with a potential u-turning ogre pond potential crunch on the overquill it just spreads a little bit more damage that i enjoy and i didn't really think that we needed another item here besides maybe boots or Roost for Longevity, or Rocks, because I like Rocks a little bit more here because it punishes some form of a Latios switch in, gets him in range. Round of Rocks allows him to be in range of Mega Horn from Iron Boulder, guaranteed. And I thought that was a pretty useful calc, so we went with Stealth Rocks over Spikes. It's also highly possible he's a Life Orb Latios, so limiting those switch ins as much as possible with the Rocks are going to be crucial. Or Brave Bird plus Body Press because that covers pretty much the whole team. I thought Brave Bird was pretty important to hit not only the Iron Valiant super effective, but also the Ogre Pond. Our defensive spread allows us to live two Specs Latios Dracos. That's the first Draco into the second Draco drop, I think. Unless he gets the absolute max roll both times with two Latios Dracos if he is Specs. And then we went the rest into physical defense. Obviously, it helps with the Overquill and the Ogre Pond specifically. In Skarmory... Its job is to check the Ogre Pond, and if the Ogre Pond doesn't come, it's a little bit more free to just kind of throw out there and get rocks up at any point. If we don't see the Don fan, obviously that's pretty free. If we do see the Don fan, this is also a check to the Don fan, so fantastic. 
Our next Pokemon is gonna be AV Uncle Mike. We're gonna be a weird set. We're fake out. What are we? Fake out Drain Punch, Ice Punch, Heavy Slam, Heavy Slam for the Valiant. Ice Punch is really good into most of the team. Latios as well as Ogre Pond, Drain Punch for Stab as well as Recovery. And then fake out to spread damage on specifically Valiant and Latios because they can get out of hand, man. And fake out can at least pressure them somewhat, put them in range of potential other roles from like the, the Iron Boulder or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then the AV allows us to live hits that we otherwise would not be able to live from specifically the Valiant and the Latios. It's hopefully to just potentially catch them off guard. It's not the best set. I think there were a lot of good Uncle Mike sets. This is ultimately what I landed on just because I'm so weak to Latios and I am Valiant. I think that we can maybe, I don't know, man, not great. It's not great, but we can take two Moonblasts from that Iron Valiant. We can KO in return with Heavy Slam. So I do think it is worth it. We have enough speed to outspeed a 24 speed Empoleon. We can Oko the Valiant with Heavy Slam with our investment, and then we went the remaining 12 into Defense. I do think there were a lot of really good Uncle Mike sets. I think this Pokemon also does very well into the matchup. And I think AV to catch the Latios or the Valiant off guard was very much so worth it, especially because we take two Iron Valiant Moonblast non boosted. I think that's fantastic. And I think Uncle Mike is crucial for us to win this game. Next up, I'll be honest, we have the set I am the least sure on. I changed this set so many times. We're Earth's Luna Blood Moon. We're going to be speedy. We're going to have the Chapel. We outspeed a 24 speed Overquill. This is going to be our guaranteed lead. And we're just going to try to punch a hole as soon as the game starts. Originally, I had a Focus Sash variant just in case he led Specs Latios. That way I didn't feel intimidated and forced to switch out. Uh, obviously, I took that away and that puts me in a little bit of a bad situation. But I think he might use I am Valiant more as the breaker than Latios and use Latios as the late game win con and if he does and he leaves valiant i'm in a tough spot so i don't know i went chapel berry it also helps us in the late game i mean sash would have got the same thing accomplished i guess looking back at it so maybe sash is better but chapel berry gives me some more late game potential so we're leading this pokemon specifically to catch the overquill because we actually lead very poorly into the overquill unless we lead this pokemon we're moonlight we're calm mind we're blood moon we're earth power earth power hits impo in overquill blood moon hits everything else Calm Mind can actually get a little bit out of hand for our opponent. Again, I debated between like a Yawn 3 attack set with Focus Sash lead or this set. And I, I landed on this set because it does very well mid-game if it doesn't die off lead. Very possible <laughs> it doesn't do what I want it to do and it dies off lead. But again, here to counter the Overquill, not very confident in it. We're like very much so not a set that I would typically love to run, but we'll see if it works. And then lastly, we're bringing Frostlass. I don't know. Our last slot was like very bad. There was not one of our last four Pokemon that did good. Wigglytuff can't take two hits from the Latios. And I, I looked at a competitive Wigglytuff with White Herb. That way, if we get the Luster Purge drop, we get the White Herb. We're back to neutral Spadap. Take a hit and we're plus two special attack. We still don't do damage. So I scrapped that. <laughs> uh, Rillaboom did very poorly. It also made the Ogre Punch stronger. So if he did decide to bring it and our Skarmory got chipped at any point in the game, we could potentially lose to the Ogre Pond. Uh, and obviously it's a Talonflame too. So Rillaboom just had overall a very poor matchup. Uh, what else do we even have? What's our other Pokemon? Oh, Blastoise. Blastoise was considered, I did consider like potentially a Shell Smash Blastoise, but the fact that Ogre Pond always gets the Embody Aspect speed, not fun. Not fun. It, it messed up... I think it outspat us. Let me just verify. Huh, it didn't. I mean, he had a lot of special checks. We didn't do as much damage as I wanted to. At plus two to things like Empoleon and things like we needed, th what, five attacks? We needed Surf Ice Beam or Sphere Shell Smash. That could have done good, I guess. But I valued this Frost last a little bit more. Uh, he gives a shard potential for Latios, which is huge in my opinion, because it could be potentially, like I said, late game sweeper. It also gives us more priority into the Iron Valiant that will hit it pretty well. We have spikes whenever we have Stealth Rock on Skarmory, so we can potentially stack if we don't see, of course, the Don Fan. And even if we do see the Don Fan, like spinning is going to be a little tough for him between Frostlass and Skarmory. And then Ice plus Ghost Coverage was pretty hard for our opponent to switch into. That's going to be the team. This is the least confident team that I've had all season. I'm not very confident in the matchup, but we're going to try our best, boys. Ultimately, the game plan is just kind of out bulk him and catch things off guard. It's not the best game plan. I'm not super confident. I think we could potentially run into a lot of problems with Latios. This is going to have to be one of those games where I just play very well because the build is not quite there. So hopefully I'm in the game, man. Get the head in the game, move on to three and two and move forward in this season. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to leave a like if you have not already. And thank you guys so much for watching. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. signing off.
outside of that, I think those four are guaranteed. The last two slots are pretty up in the air. I think Talon Flynn could make an appearance. Don Fan could make an experience. An experience? Hello? 